section on the proposed concession of four international airports in the country. You will recall that in September, this committee had to intervene to affect a part an industrial action by the organized network against the proposed concession of four international airports by the federal government. The affected airports include Montana Mohammed International Airport, MMI in Lagos, Aminu Kanu International Airport, Kanu, Nanda Tukiwe International Airport, Abuja, and the Potakot International Airport, Our aim was not to unnecessarily meddle with the policies of the executive, but as a representative of the people, we would not close our eyes to issues that may break instability and arrest in these critical sectors. This prompted our meeting with the leadership of the Aviation Union and those of the Nigerian Labour Congress. However, during the meeting, they raised quite a number of issues that warranted their opposition to the planned concession, which they itemized as follows. One, lack of transparency in the exercise. Two, no clear position on labor issues. Three, no plans on the payment of Chinese loans. Four, legal issues that may arise from the existing concession at the affected airports. Five, lack of proper valuation of the airport related for concession. Six, no value, what value addition at the intended concessionaire bring, bringing on board. Our minister, who has also promised the union and the level that we will raise this concern with you for clarification to help down the growing tension in the industry. I want to assure you and your team that the desire of this committee and the entire House of Presidents is to propagate ideals of, of peace and unity among the various components of this great nation. This sector cannot afford any arrest at the moment of the level. This is why we wrote to your office to request for the following documents. One, copy of outline business page for the concession. Two, copy of the Chinese loan agreement for the airport. Three, a copy of the report of the project delivery team. Four, report of the transaction advisor. Five, asset valuation report for the airports. Six, cash flow of the airports of a concession for the last five years period. Seven, copies of all existing concessions of affected airports, if any. Eight, investment plan of all the concessionaires and, and their projection. Nine, the evaluation report of the concession as submitted to ICRC. We are happy that we did substantially com comply by providing seven out of the nine items requested. We also expect to have the evaluation report for the concession as submitted to the ICRC. We also expect to have the on-lending agreements determined on-lending agreements on-lending agreements the payment schedule and any other documents pertaining to the loan because they are equally vital to the documents we are holding on this concession. In addressing this matter, I expect all of us to be sensitive and show understanding to safeguard industry and the national economy in general. I equally expect all parties to be prepared to shift position when necessary in the interest of peace and harmony. There should be no rigidity on the part of labor and the ministry. Let everyone be guided by one ideal, the overall interest of Nigeria. Mr. Chairman, when we took over government in 2015, it was a time when the country was descending into recession which is eventually did. And income, income of government has 
falling down drastically. The price of crude has gone below uh, twenty dollar per barrel, which is um, far below the cost of harnessing the oil itself. In civilization, we have the inadequacy of safety, security, and serverless equipment which is necessary for the safety of our industry. We have delayed infrastructure and also equipment. We have the, now that you mentioned, the Chinese loan for the quotas and buildings on the sector. We have a large number of unfair personnel within the sector. There's high debt of uh, debt profile of domestic airlines, and the industry was further uh, burdened by local debts uh, to AMPA, for example, is owing us by company, sanitary etc. etc. Et we are only sanitary, by company is uh, owing us tremendous amount of money. So we first reviewed the previous reports that were conducted in this industry, amongst which were the IOS report, the DGS report, the Paul DK report. And we commissioned General Electric's GE under the IBS uh, solution to carry out the diagnostic uh, study of the industry to see what level and where we are. This was in 20 the chairman said. The study was done, and the consequence of that, we developed a roadmap to which we shared with staff and uh, labor and uh, other stakeholders in the industry. We ran this roadmap about three times, and we took it to the president for approval. Thereafter, we discussed the roadmap again, as you will see, quoting the dates at the time with the stakeholders another three times. This is not including the about 10, 12 times that we discussed at the smaller forum uh, at the time goes on. But this roadmap, which is the concession, was well discussed thoroughly. Um, I remember the very first one was the Electoral Center here in Abuja which was attended by over a thousand people, including members of the House of Reps and the Senate. And in that uh, roadmap, we discussed extensively the issue of concession. So, stakeholders accepted our roadmap, but they found out there some concerns which we consider legitimate, especially as it affects the concession. Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to read over the, the um, roadmap, but I'll just go through uh, straight to the concerns raised by stakeholders as far as concession is concerned. One, they feel that there will be job loss, and this is coming from labor. They feel that there is no way that you are going to go and partition the airports and then there will not be job loss. This is the position of the or unions. And they think that the position should be a green field, not a brown field. In other words, the concessionaire should be given a space of land within our airports and develop its own terminal. <coughs> and then they also think that there is an alternative to concession which could include things like corporatization of farm, for example. They also thought that this process that we're doing lacks compliance with the EPA and concession laws. And then they thought that we didn't carry out project identification, prioritization, or concept laws at the, at the beginning. All these are not true, respectfully, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps people who think this way are people who either miss the news or have 
I'm not coming across the news. So, starting point, Mr. Chairman, this concession is terminal concession. Terminal concession. It has nothing to do with the runways or the Dota or any other facilities. Only the terminal building. Mr. Chairman, the current government power, the APC, is a social democratic party. We are social democrats. We will not sell people's assets. We will not sell people's assets. We will not go for privatization. These assets can only be given in concession, made better, and then go back and always be with the people. So it's not an intent to sell. It's a concession. The chairman, when we were engaging the uh, stakeholders, we told them that, look, the fact that it's a terminal concession, and if there's any fear of job loss, first and foremost, there are 8,100 staff in fund. Only 1,158 of them are working within the general buildings. This is 14.29% of the total workforce currently. So currently you've got 8,100 workers, out of which only 1,158 are working in the terminal buildings that are going to be positioned. And this terminal building is not even in the Kano, Potako, Lagos, and Abuja. This is the entire terminal business in the country. It's only 1,158, and that of them for 2.29%. Now, Mr. Chairman, we've got in the new Lagos Airport, which has been completed, pretending to a few issues which will commission uh, by the rest of the world before the end of the year. We've got the new Kano Airport. This new Kano Airport will finish. We, we can open tomorrow, but we want to put it together to open the same day with Lagos. This new airport will be needing manpower to run them. We'll be, we've been given Kelly Airport, we've been given Dusa Airport, we've been given Osubi Airport, we've been given Bombay Airport, and many more. All of these we will take over before the end of the year, and they will be given manpower running. So, which means one will be employing uh, other rather than sending away. So, Canon, Lagos, Kenny, Bauchi, Bombay, Susie, Duty, etc., will be joining federal government airports and they will be using manpower to run them. Now, Mr. Chairman, as we go through the uh, discussion, we will put to you that uh, all of the legal issues, we put a milestone where those legal issues will be discussed. Then the question regarding the greenfield versus brownfield. If, just imagine they go to We've got a space currently from where Bristol Rogers is all the way to the end towards Adige uh, motorway. If we get a question here and you put up a great field there, and put a fantastic terminal, um, which I think it should, what will happen is that we'll still be maintaining this other airport. But certainly because of better facility, because of better accommodation, the airlines will migrate to that new because they are better staff than that. So what will happen is that if it is a fast staff that are in the other side, they will not be having work to do. So it's the green fields that happen. But now, if the position here will take the old Lagos airport, tear it down, and bring it to up to international standard and what we look at because of our cost is a one level airport now, this is two level airport with the railroad and departure, plus the new terminal building, Chinese terminal building. We have one solid structure under the management of an expert, which is the question here, and therefore creating more opportunities, more jobs, and 
all of these airlines would be happy to use the post new improved facility rather than getting a great deal. And the cost in the negotiations that will come, the cost also that you put your money to do Chinese settlement, and you already have an existing structure, it gives you a lot of room for bargain, a lot of room opportunity to bargain and to get the best deal. And that's why you have as government, you have a concession agreement. Now, Mr. Chairman, this thing, this concession, is covered by law, an act that this parliament previously passed, which is the ICRC Act. And uh, anything that is outside the law will not be permitted by the regulator or by the government itself. So once we took over, we wrote to ICRC and asked them to do a side start in the ministry that can guide us in accordance with the concession um, that we intend to do in accordance with the Act of the ICRC. And they posted competent staff to our ministry to tell us on a day to day basis on how to go about the concession. Because the concession itself is new in the world as against privatization, and therefore they have to develop an agency of government to deal with that. Maybe we have to go through the chronology of events for concession and what we did. In December 2015, April 2016, like I said, we engaged the ICRC. We did the sector diagnostic review by GE, IBS Solutions, and then we drafted the roadmap. We wrote a letter to the President seeking approval for implementation of the roadmap on the 27th of April 2016. So which means this is identification of project based on need and even want. We did our first stakeholder conference at the Ecuador Center on the 16th of May 2016, which was attended without the records by well over 1,000 people. So speaking transparency, the next would be that on the 13th of June, 2016, we put out an advert for expression of interest for concession advisors in two national days as required by the ICS and including the tender journal. So we advertised that, look, we are going to go to the concession of airports and we'll be needing transaction advisory services and we are calling for people to apply. Then according to the act, or the act also, um, on the 9th of September 2016, we inaugurated project delivery team and project steering committee in accordance with the ICRC Act. And because we want to be more transparent, in the act of the ICRC and by the guidelines, in the PDT, which is the engine room for the day-to-day -day activity of the concession, which is a project delivery team, labor was missing. I, in a meeting, in the very first meeting, decided and asked that labor be included in the committee before we met. So labor were asked to give their representation to the union, and the unions gave two names. Actually, I found that they put one name, it was not a very large committee. But they insisted on having two, and we presented them to member uh, inside the project delivery team. And this is where everything to do with concession will happen. So they're well represented. And by the way, this includes the height of the project. The included the inaugurated post. Yes, sir. Okay, you did at the same time, the same day? Yes, sir. So they do the same function? No, sir. Which one did you inaugurate first? I guess you inaugurated the steering committee, then the steering committee gave birth to the PDT. Don't think about it. The point is that the, the project delivery, the project steering committee, which is like the, um, I don't want to call it the clearinghouse, 
But when I all the activity of the delivery team would go to, I get the first time of the That's the difference. Yeah, because the, immediately the parent community, once in a very innovative, then immediately you set up the project delivery team. Automatically, the parent community dissolves. No, no, they're not. Are they not. working at the same time? No, sir. Then they can't work at the same time. No, they're not working at the same time. Okay, that's what I want. Everything will be working, whatever they do, and finish the final product and not to the steering committee. Whatever they do. Well, sir. You have the better of these documents, right? Where is Black? Give me this document. I want you to take it to Abu Risa to be sure the document. So, Mr. Chairman, if I can read out the, these are judgments and areas. Okay. If I can read out, if I can read out the rules of PDC and that of the PSC, maybe from the chairman. The role of PDC is one, review relevant existing reports, studies, etc., necessary to become familiar with the proposed projects. So, PDC is supposed to do that, to review all of these reports, studies, and from a right of self -based. Then two, review all documents on the concession of the project prepared by concession advisors, bidders, etc. as may be required. So PDT is supposed to review all documents on the concession of the project prepared by the concession advisor and bidders as well. Number three, they should meet to consider matters referred to it by key stakeholders and transaction advisors on the project. Number four, they should develop a framework for the procurement of advisory services that might be required in the concession process in accordance with the ICRC guidelines. Number five, they have to assist in setting up data room and site decisions. Number six, that support procurement of the concession yard in accordance with ICRC guidelines. Generally work with the project team and advisor. Do coordination of activities, partners with government and agencies to facilitate early delivery of the project. They have to ensure compliance with ICRC Act 2006, ensure compliance and then the national policy of PPP. They also to ensure that adequate social and environmental assessment is undertaken for the project. They have to assist in interfacing with key stakeholders for the actualization of the concession exercise. They have to support the team and play a key role in the negotiation of the concession agreement, PDC. They have to assist in the preparation of monthly reports for the early decision making by the steering committee. So even this now shows you one of the steering committee. And the process, the proposed, that to propose the best mode of delivering the bank capital project as a PPP project. So that to propose the best mode of delivering the bank capital project. That to carry out any other function that may be assigned to it and the steering committee. Separately or jointly actualize the concession exercise. This is the role of the delivery uh, team. We will also put the membership of the, of the two teams, which we see there, the membership, we see that it includes Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Justice, uh, Minister of Budgets and National Planning, etc., et et as members. So it's not only an official matter, it's internally. Then the roles of the PSC. 
the, e the PSC will approve the transition framework for the project developed by the project delivery team. So if the project delivery team have developed the project, then the approval of the framework comes from the PSC. And then we also approve the procurement of technical consultants. I.e. if the transition advisor is been found through a diligent process by the PDT, then the approval will come from the PSC. The PSC also will approve technical, financial and legal considerations that are deemed necessary for successful preparation and execution of the transition project. They are also to advise and provide high level support to the MDA and the PDT, the transition projects. They are to approve the activities of the MDA, PDT, and the same that would facilitate the concession project. So all the activities of the PDT will be approved by the PSC. They are to assist the questionnaire in obtaining all clearances like environmental clearance approvals and permits as might be necessary. They are to brief the minister or the CEO from time to time on the activities of this direct of the progress and challenges of the transition studies. They are to consider the role of other key stakeholders and ensure that they engage early in the development of the project and their cooperation participation secure ahead of time. The project scale the project steering committee is to be chaired by the department of security or in any MPA by the chief accounting officer. So in this case, it is chaired by the department uh, of security. Perhaps it will become clearer if I continue uh, this uh, presentation. So, Mr. Chairman, then on the 9th of September, like I said, the elevation of the PDT and the PSC, the presidential approval for the roadmap of the project came on the 18th of October 2016, will be shared. The second stakeholder conference held at, Com at Sheraton Hotel on the 12th of November 2016. This is more with the, uh, at the instance of our unions and staff. Then shortlisted transition advisors submitted their technical and financial briefs on the 19th of December 2016, arriving from the advert of the day. Chairman, we also held a third stakeholder conference at the Caracol Center here in Abuja on the 5th of January 2017. 5th of January 2017. Then we got a Bureau of Public Procurement issued as a certificate of no objection for the transition advisor to the 2nd of February 2017. Then the Federal Executive Council starts and approved on the 3rd of May 2017 the transition advisors to carry out this transaction. Yet again, Mr. Chairman, on the 29th of March 2018, we held the fourth stakeholder conference or forum at Nigeria Post Conference Center in Abuja, also attended by the Power Department. Then, on the 8th of November 2018, we held the fifth stakeholder forum at Mass Center. Then we put the outline business case. Outline business case done March 2020. Then we got the ICRC to issue certificate of compliance of the outline business case on the 23rd of June 2020. Project steering committee reviewed and approved the OBC on the 29th of September 2020.
Okay, Mr. Chair. Well, I need one critical uh, slide that I want to go through and then take it to my desk. Okay, oh, we can have uh, I'm here, I'm here, Mr. Chair. I'm here. Okay. And then 
I seriously will not issue a certificate of compliance with the full business case. Then you now take that full business case to the Federal Reserve Council again for them to approve with Mr. President. And then after this is done, now this is the, uh, that is the winner at last. And that winner will be approved by the Federal Reserve Council. And once you come out, then you now begin the implementation. Financial flow will now be achieved. The work begins with regular inspections of the project by ICRC and MDA and the of the law. So the fact that so far this is the final, so this is the final stage. Uh, once this is done, we are not using it by the way, of course, then the roles of the MDA which is defined, the little bit is fine, and the role of the ministry which is defined, um, will now kick in also at this juncture. So these are the four steps. So we've done step one and two, and the real thing which is step two and step three and four will begin uh, in due course. So it's time to start. Well, um, uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, all of them is done. Well, uh, I must say that um, from uh, what he's been saying, he's very educated. Well, I did think that you briefed us this thing earlier. At least we don't have uh, But it's also very good and important because um, by the time we finish with you here on concession, I don't think anybody will raise any doubt about the concession. So that's the importance of uh, meeting uh, with the parliament because we we'll, we'll also take it to our colleagues and uh, fund them their sense of the concession, whether it's good or bad. So moving forward, I would like uh, my colleagues to ask you some questions. Smaller airlines, the smaller airports. You are the expert. 
like that, I'm sure that um, you might want to look at something like that. So for me, I would have thought that's the number one thing that I should have done, as opposed to concessioning the world, the terminals that are profitable. And in any case, we say terminals, and it's like taking, it's like giving everything to the concessionaire, yeah. carport, cargo, all of that. Well, what is left for, um, for example, fam, you know, and we're looking at the OBC. I did notice that uh, there was issue of uh, 60, 40 percent sort of thing, and I was like, did you not avert your mind? Maybe the uh, 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 BDT and uh, the steering committee, did you not avert your mind to the fact that this same fan, because when it is concession, don't forget that the federal government is still going to pay the loan because we are still owing. We want to, uh, the, the, this particular terminal that has been concession are renovated from the Chinese law. So if you do that, you might need to look at the agreement, the loan agreement between us and the and, 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 and the and the Chinese. Because once it is concession, I'm sure that there, there might be a problem. In any case, the percentage that supposedly going to go to France, do not forget that 25 percent because. One as one of the GOEs, they are bound to a Remy um, 25% to the federal government. Whatever they get, 25% of it, they're supposed to Remy do, do, do their remittance. And then from that, they're supposed to pay their, their, pay their staff. They're, paying, they're supposed to do all of that and now pay the loan. Because if they can't pay, that means the federal government will pay the loan. And for me, as a leopard, I'm just saying, why does, does it really make sense? that you will get loan, renovate your place, and concession it. I would think that the best thing to do is to concession the ones that are not working. That's what I am. Renovated it and get them and it's taking a tiny percentage. And it's like almost everything is going to be concession here, whoever it is. We haven't gotten to that, uh, uh, that point yet. So it's not even the issue of the particular person. So we're talking generally, whoever Assuming this goes on, whoever is getting it, it doesn't make sense. It's not value for money at all because we end up paying and we're not getting value. So I, I, I have major concerns. I love your submission definitely, but I have major concerns um, in some of these areas. I have more anyway, but let me uh, uh, use the floor to. I'm more interested in uh, building and building some public properties. I love that. Um, I'm going to listen to your submission or whatever. Um, only, I, will, I will not say you to mention, but you will not mention the duration of the concession. That's my interest. Because, uh, the duration of the concession. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You mentioned that I'm no job loss. The question I want to ask the concessionaire still bound to protect every single box that's existing. And also, the patients that are able to most of them, not all of them. Secondly, uh, my, my sister I just said, the, the concessionaire who is taking this purpose, uh, they are not party to the agreement. Just said, part of the agreement between the Chinese government and the federal government. In cause of default, or not being able to, to meet up with the, the payment, the container is not banned in any form to, to pay such loans. Or is, it, is the Chinese government going to be party to the, to the agreement with the concession, requiring all the liabilities of the federal government to the concessionaire? These are things we need to know. And they're going to be party to this Chinese government that in the default of payment of this loan, the Colonial is going to pay those loans so that we don't defend the, we don't let us to the leader of sovereignty as well as the speculating in terms of these loans that have been taken. Thank you very much. Yeah, Hassan Abdullahi Mohamed. I represent Nikola Masa from Polisi. As a runner towards uh, 
Honorable in the uh, talking about the uh, Bible and Torah, the one that I know Bible, and then trying to sell the one that uh, is Bible, leaving the one that is not Bible uh, out of it. All efforts are as important as the other. But even if it seems not to be Bible, there could be emergency. Now, we're talking about the percentage of what comes to fun and what goes to something else. Who is going to manage those that appears not to be uh, viable because we need, we need to run that in case of any emergency or whatever. Number two, uh, I'll let here also talk about pension. The status of farm pension. Status. Second, the deduction from uh, for retirement uh, savings account of uh, staff, uh, whether they have been remitted to PFAs for the last one year, and then also the uh, another question is uh, the outstanding accrued uh, right of staff that he has to be remitted. Please, you can tell the uh, the house. That actually right as what or within that is that a good question. You asked about what happened to the 18 airports. Yeah, they are not the, the so called non viable 18 airports. Yeah. What happened to those airports when um, they take the viable ones? That's your question. It will include the apron and top of So, and it's a document. Then, regarding the question as to profitable and non-profitable airports, um, profitability of an airport, Mr. Chairman, sir, with maximum respect, is directly proportional to the activity around that airport. So, therefore, part of our roadmap is to develop those activities around each and every single airport in the country, which is part of our roadmap, to generate the need for air transportation, either cargo lifting or passenger movement or other businesses of civilization. We give you a classical example of some of these. Um, at some point in this country, an individual, one individual, not government, not a uh, huge company, private sector, commenced activity around Yola Airport and he was exporting pineapples and mangoes. That generated activity around that airport. And because of the traffic, plus other uh, visitation of friends and family, we saw once moribund Yola Airport began to become vibrant and people began to go there. And since we started, we've seen traffic on a daily basis in and out of Yola Airport. We've done that similar now in Akure. If I was asked to give example of Katina Airport at a time when I engaged the labor uh, or the union. At that time, they were being a bit cheeky, like, you know, like a friend. So why don't you start with Katina? And I told them what I can do with Katina Airport, with due respect. I told them at that time, out of those dams, and we use the airport to export them five hours to Middle East or five hours to Europe. They will go there fresh and post harvest loss will be reduced tremendously and they will sell much more at a more exchange. A handful of tomatoes in London is 10 pounds, I always say. A whole basket in my place during Kaka period, which is harvest period, 300, 500 maximum. So if you create that activity, that, cargo, that, that perishable item exportation activity around the airport, it will be one of the uh, most viable airports. And we are on our way to doing that. Because if we put it, for example, imagine producing from um, um, Kano to Gadam tomatoes, and you want to take it to Lagos, it's 23 hours in uh, a trailer. By the time you get to Lagos, half is perished. And it will still sell for 2,000 naira, 3,000 naira for a basket. As compared to when you fly five hours and you want foreign stage. So, uh, so activity around the airport of the chairman, which will plan for all the two airports, we will have them uh, profitable. So the profitability is dependent upon the activity that you create around the airport. Then, 
we didn't borrow money to fix the uh, airport, madam. They, in the wisdom of the former government, they decided to borrow money to build new terminals, which was Lagos, Potakot, Kano, and Abuja. And then they put, then they put a new uh, a one in Enugu to be funded from federal budget. This was an investment that government did, which we came and found at about 10% to 2% maximum completion, which we now proudly took to 100% completion. So it wasn't borrowing, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't borrowing to, to rehabilitate airports, it's borrowing to build fresh uh, terminal buildings. So, yeah, okay. I'm coming to the next follow-up question. So in other words, Madam, these Chinese buildings or Chinese terminals as they referred to is a decision of government, just like government decided to borrow money and build the runway, for example. So it's a loan of the Ministry of Finance. It's a loan for the Ministry of Finance, the end user is the vision. Now, during negotiation, sorry, go ahead. You want to say something? We are owing. The yeah. government was owing. Yeah. Like we are owing everything. And that is not a part of the government. My point, my point that submitted to us about at this point, well, it got up to uh, 2019, as of 2019, the viability and otherwise of the airport. Right? It's saying that they are viable. So I'm just saying, if we have new terminals that we, we borrowed money to, right? If you're saying that the Ministry of Finance will pay back, how are they going to pay back? Still, it's still like drum money. Are they going to generate money from elsewhere from okay. to stay? Madam, I think so the point they are trying to make, the whole purpose, it will be more viable when you free up the amount of money you are spending to maintain the terminal abuse of the net of fund and give it to a position here, which you will value adequately. You will go through negotiations, you will go through evaluation, you will go through agreements. You, don't, you just don't take terminal business and say, okay, give me 60% uh, of X. Or 40 percent. Those are in the outline. In the full business case, you would have negotiated. First and foremost, find the value of your airport. What is the future of your airport? What is the potential of your airport? How much can your airport bring in? All of this will be taken into consideration when you are negotiating. That is the purpose. That is the purpose of the transaction advisor. And uh, these transaction advisors, uh, one of the companies that I can remember within the uh, transaction advisor service are people that have over 200 transactions. In you know, yeah, in Prata, for example. No, no, no. Thank you, sir. So these are people that are, that are going to be paid and they are good at their game. So in, in trying to decide uh, how much will fund earn from the transaction, how much, and how much will the transaction advisor earn, sorry, uh, the concessionaire earn, is you have to value your own airport value its potentials, make a projection of how much you get from that, and then see whether what he is offering to you is something that you can take. It's all subject of negotiation, and diligent, diligent negotiation for that matter. Um, if I run through all the questions, I don't want to be going and then coming back, but if you, then you can now make, make a note, and then perhaps we we'll continue that way, so we don't lose uh, track. So, for the attempt time, it is a process of negotiation, which we are not there yet at all, we are far from being there. These, uh, uh, when you do the technical and the financial uh, uh, submissions and they are evaluated, then you go into negotiations. Yes, the concession that uh, she asked the question and orders, she asked the question and orders, and you clarified. You said, terminal building, cargo, apron, car park. Yes, that's it. Good. Do you have um, ICR certificate or not? Yes. Because yes. I'm aware, I'm aware that ICR gave you certificate for terminal business. Yes. They did give, they did give you that certificate for apron and the car park and the lift. Yes, Chairman. The tables. And this is just OVC. It's not the foundation itself. They've given us in accordance with our what we submitted in the OVC. And what we submitted in the OVC includes this terminal building, the cargo terminal, uh, and the car park. 
And you will see also in my submission that should there be any, should there be any, let's say there is a suffer somewhere, which finally is used has given to somebody in a position. This will be factored in also and be clear. You follow me? If you have a if you have a car park which is being operated and you want to include it in, you will have to allow it to run through what you have agreed legally and you negotiate. So the, the, the OPC uh, outline outline design case, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Is stronger than the ICRC that is There is no there is no um, certificate on cattle. No, the certificate of ITS is making an adjustment to the fact. What you intend to do, the whole picture, what you are seeing, you have followed the due process, you followed all of the due process to arrive at putting up an outline business case, which means intent. That's to do. But your intention must conform, must conform with established laws of the land. So ICRC is saying that what you intend to do in your business case, in your business case, your intention has conformed with the laws of the land as the regulators. And that is the meaning of the certificate. And that certificate says that all that we intend to do in the OBC, which we stated, has complied with the law. Before we now go to the main issues of doing the advert, inviting people, bringing your technical, financial, evaluating them, negotiating, agreeing, how much money I get, how much money you lose, and all of that. Before all that happens, this stage where we are, ITS is saying that we have complied with those laws of the land. What is the meaning of the cargo, apron, and cover. Yes, sir. No, I read this this document. Yes. No, frankly speaking, he when you, be, when, when you, you need to understand the position, he tries to, he tries to improve on the status of our sports. He has no doubt about it. But we also need to help him. Okay? Well, we, we, need, we need to help him in the sense that I, I was, I, I attended the, the last, uh, the last, um, public hearing, yes, the Senate, yes, the fan public hearing, yes, and uh, there was something you said, very interesting, very promising. The question was asked, how are we going to improve on the uh, aviation industry with regards to, air, to, uh, to airlines? You, re you remember? Yes, I do. And I think also asked, what are we going to do to reduce the cost of Airplane, that's yes. cost yes. of uh, tickets. Yes, I remember. Yes. And um, you said, I picked two things. Yes, sir. One, the leasing, com leasing company yes, sir. that you just engaged the consultant. Yes, sir. That you gave the consultant. Then maintenance MRO. Yes, sir. That will assist the airlines not to travel out, not to take their planes out. Yes, sir. That will help them at least do. Uh, a, a checks, B check, positive C check. Very interesting. But I see it as being interesting because, frankly speaking, the country, a lot of things has changed in Nigeria. The, the economy, I see, what we, are, what we are going to do now is to support an industry that will improve on, like in the, in the, in the aviation sector, Two critical things are involved, safety and security. Very critical to the industry, safety and security. And I believe that the government should focus more on safety and security. Okay? The government should focus on safety and security. Then, on the issue of MRO and the, and the, the aviation leasing company, I also believe that you need to do BOT, Build of Rates and Transfer. It, 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 I, I have looked at the, the programs, I have looked at the, the you have done um, uh, RFP, the request for proposal. You just did it? Yes. Good. In doing it, I also believe that we shouldn't go into getting government involved in funding it. 
I think private sector is should be totally private sector driven. So that whatever we have in the sector, we push it to their side. That will guarantee safety and security. Okay? So as we uh, so that we not uh, we'll be on the same page by the time the MRO that they uh, maybe you know it's important so that we we'll understand that government is not going to fund it. The private sector will fund it. So that's uh, the position I think is in uh, we'll continue, we we'll allow you to continue while you give us time to ask some questions to when you sorry, please. System in our perspective. And for that system to work, every component of it must work and uh, must work optimally. And we think that government does not have money enough uh, to keep doing it how they used to do it in the 60s. And government does everything. So therefore the private sector, which are experienced now in these businesses, will come in and take over these activities and do them better. And then government will still earn money and keep the assets for themselves. We will not sell. Um, why did I say it's a system? In a country like Nigeria, with 200 million people, 450 billion GDP, at the center of Africa, equidistant from all locations, with the traveling people, Nigerians love to travel even for nothing, is a very good candidate for innovation activity. And the reason why we created the system to include the MRO, which is the Maintenance Repair and Overall Center, the leasing company, the airline itself, and the concession, is because they all work in unison. I give example. In the continent of Africa, there are only about three maintenance repair and overhaul for aircraft uh, of any significant uh, size. And this is the Royal uh, Air Morocco in Morocco, which was established by Air France and serving Air France only. So if you try to go there with your engine, if you are an airpiece or you are an addict and you want to service your engine there, they will have to serve Air France first. So to get slot for your engine is difficult and your airplane will be down. Uh, there is one also in Egypt, which is for Egypt Air. That also will be serving Egypt. There's another one in Ethiopia, serving Ethiopian Airlines. In this subcontinent, in the Central and West Africa, 600 million people equals to twice the size of US in population. With a lot of aviation activity, there is not a single MRO, there is not a single maintenance, repair, and overhaul. We all take these airplanes outside the country to maintain them and bring them back. If you are taking a small airplane to ferry it out, it's $50,000. Ferry it in, it's $50,000. If you are taking a larger aircraft, it's quarter a million dollars to ferry it in and out. So the country will be losing a lot of money. This is just for ferry. Taking it out and wait, wait time, get it maintained and bring it back. Your airplane or your engine can be there for one month, two months. So if we have them in Nigeria, one, we say for exchange. Two, it will generate labor. Three, it will be done in Nigeria. Four, it will boost the economic uh, activity of the country and add to the efficiency of the sector. Now with this MRO, you cannot have an MRO without the planes. So establishing the national carrier as it were, to get a very robust uh, uh, carrier equal to our population and our zeal to travel, that kind of airline would need a maintenance plan for all sector and vice versa. And because also there is Simple African air transport market in place today. They will open the entire African market for everybody to go wherever he wants to go to. A lot of activity will happen very soon. We project in the year 2022, first quarter. A lot of planes will be moving around and they will come into Nigeria. If you have a small, non robust uh, airport, they would seek elsewhere where they will go closer to your market. So they use the local transportation to come back in. So Nigeria deserves to have that robust, that well built, that expanded uh, um, airport of, that we deserve. So we will, we will have to develop this airport. And then also, um, all of these entrepreneurs in aviation, one of the biggest challenges they have is capital. Access to equipment, money. And that's why they come down. Most of them will have to go and maybe lease an old airplane and bring it into the country and begin to maintain with such amount of money and then eventually they, they will not be able to do it and then they will collapse. So we thought that once you have the airline going, you have the MRO going, 
Yeah, better help with the next is to allow people access to this equipment. So we set up an ALC, aviation legal company, where you have access to money, finance, to get equipment in. E either to get your aircraft in, or to get your engines in, or whatever you want, or if you are a, a ground handling, to get your equipment for ground handling into the country at a very, very cheap rate. Because nobody can operate, nobody can do business in civil aviation where the margin is 5%, Taking a loan from the government, from Nigerian banks at 23%, up to 27% in some cases. So because they, they always go to banks and get their engine and their airplanes financed at 27% and come to do a business that gives you 5%, that's why they fail. So we have already established, together with this concession, <coughs> together with the national carrier, together with it, we are, we are doing the MRO and the vision in the company. But because people, for some reason, they are more interested in the concession and the airline is the ones that are being talked about. We have been in the news for the MRO and the a ALC. We have just opened uh, the uh, technical and financial bid. Technical bid, rather. Which will now go for financial for the, um, for the MRO and ALC. Which will now work in unison. So that's why we have the chairman uh, regarding that. But perhaps... Yes. Yeah. Maintenance. We have the test at the hospital, right? And the reason comes. I don't think we should attach it to the national carrier. For a reason. You see, the only thing that will sustain that those things, those MROs are private sector. Ah, uh, private sector. Yes, airlines. Yes. So well, if you are if you are if you are if you are designing the function, the functionality of MRO, you have to look, look at the private sector, look at the private airlines. They, yeah, very private airlines. airlines. Okay, not government. We are saying something, Mr. Chairman. Okay. What I was saying is that they were setting up. We'll serve the national carrier, we'll serve the private sector, we'll, we'll serve. The, is it not better to start with serving the ones we don't? Okay. But we don't know the national carrier. Okay, we'll serve, we'll, we'll, Mr. Chairman, they will even serve the uh, airlines that are in Ghana, in okay. Senegal, in, in Togo. All the, what I'm saying is that this MRO will be stretched in Nigeria, developed by private sector, by private sector, and it will serve not only those people in this region, Western South Africa. You will be most surprised and shocked, and, and I'm very, very sure, and I will be quoted one day, that this MRO will even serve the European carriers, once you do it right. Because they will come here because the level is cheap. Why is Air France establishing an MRO in, in Morocco? The reason is because of the cheap level there. Not because they want to develop their country, because of the cheap level. So because there is a condition that is good in Nigeria, the MRO will serve everybody. So let me remove the national carrier. This way it will serve everybody who has an airplane. You understand this? You understand this? <laughs> you understand this? You understand this? Yes, sir. But we also need to help you understand this more. Thank you, sir. You yeah. understand? Well guided. I want to take you to... I want to take you... I have a question as to the benefits. Uh, they will negotiate the benefits to be paid with the unions before completion and before we were joined the uh, negotiation phase. Um, the staff of PAN, they will have an option to return to PAN after the initial meeting to 24 months, which is in the OBC, I'm sure you've read. Or if they are not required by the position, yeah? So we just move on with other other events. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Uh, what we said we just have to do is what we will do. So the implication of this, if the OBC, if the uh, compliance of this is really internal to them alone, since we've not gone in gone anywhere, we've not commenced the process of bidding and all of that thing, the, what it means is that we go back to ICRC and ICRC to review the processes and then give us compliance as we get as what we request.
or the man told him that by the time he finished with us, a lot of things will be left. Thank you, sir. Well, guys, like I said, I read this in the great time. Well, guys, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Well, Mr. Please, please, um, issue of uh, Mr. Kumar. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The union issue of the staff. You know, you said that um, that the concessionaire will inherit the staff. You know, that's what you said. But if you go to page one four one of the OBC, page one four one, please. Can I have page one four one, please? It said the existing staff and employee which shall be identified on as agreed list and employed by, by identity shall be referred to the concessionaire at the start date of the agreed condition. Subject to paragraph B below, all empl employment related liability arising prior to an agreed transfer date shall remain with the grantor. The grantor is fine. So I remain with grantor, and those arising after an agreed date will be the responsibility report side for that for the first two years. For the first two years, with no reduction of salary, and if there is a restructuring staff, and if there is a restructuring staff not required following such restructure, shall be reabsorbed by fund. That will be absorbed by Kadudu. Yes, sir. That will be absorbed by Pan after the first two years. The concessionaire has the right to employ airport staff under its own term and condition. The grantor shall reabsorb staff not required and more provision for pension and gratuity of the transferred staff. They are not liable. They are not. Then they come back to fund. They come back to fund. Yes. You know, it's to support you. I'm supporting you. I'm supporting you, frankly speaking. As, uh, but in supporting you, I just want you to understand that um, they can decide to lay off everybody and keep 1%. How can fund sustain them? And you see, the problem we are having right now, fund, fund is busy. Battling with what they will do with the 2018 airport. Man, we will be busy battling with what to do with the 18 airports. You know, we, we all agree that um, is that there will be more income. Presupposing there will be more income, if in any way the fund will find out that it's not going to benefit from this concession. It is not going to go into the marriage. So if it means more income, in fact, triple income or much more income, more income it means the conditional service of fund will even improve. So the staff at liberty either to sell the position here or to come back to fund. And in that way, we are saying that because there is more money for fund now, and because fund has no longer responsibility of managing this terminal building, the channel there are money towards the uh, safety, security, critical uh, aspect and the rest for improved condition of service. So the staff has an option either to continue with the position here yeah, or to come back to fund. Either during the two, two year the two year or after. Okay. You know when I when I when I came in by the grace of uh, the, the members of the House of Presidency, I was made the chairman of the aviation committee in the house. I studied uh, everything about industry. I also realized that where the business is now is the non-aeronautic. That is the that is the that is the millennium. That is where the business is. The aeronautic aspect of it, that's not the there are no more business there. If you improve very well there, it's the business of now. Of applying passengers, of applying aircraft and all these things. That's where from what I was doing where there is more money in Kano Airport because of overflying uh, aircraft from Nama. Okay? So what I, what I think is um, once 
you remove the oxygen from fan. And you told me in one of the official discussions, you said it before the issue of this concession came this. The oxygen of fan, the fact is um, a Lagos, followed by Abuja, then Watakot, uh, Kano. That's, where, that's how they breathe. Outside that, fan will collapse completely. Completely. You just talked about Katina. How you are going to improve on Katina. Very important. Very, very nice. But I also want to encourage you, if what you are talking about in Katina is too good, I also advise that they, they put Katina as part of the report of the concession. Because it's very important, it's, uh, since you said about Katina. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, will eventually be Mr. Chairman. No. It's a phase thing. Next phase, I uh, promise the House that next phase we will put the Senate part of the airport. Oh, Mr. Chairman, we have all due respect. It's better to, it's better to do Katina and leave Lagos. Okay. It's better to do Bombay and leave Abuja. It's better to do Enugu or Were and leave Botaco. Let's see how this, how this, let me see, you see, in an industry, I believe that it's important to compete. The truth of our fund, we have seen their revenue. We requested for five years, we have to just uh, receive the loss a year. They generate about eight something billion a year. This eight something billion, for I know, we are talking about fund where you have not injected the new terminal building. If you inject the new terminal buildings in farm, I can bet you that this MD is sitting here, you give him a target. The problem we have is that we don't give MD his target. It, 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 it has to come at a point where the MDs of a, a, a big organization like farm should be given a target. We say MD, look, you are in charge of this airport, you are generating 85 billion. MD, can you do 150 billion? It's a target. You give them a target. And you say sign a contract for two years. If you cannot do it, then you, you just you resign. It happens to, to big big establishments. That's how they survive. People, managers of, uh, of, uh, of serious industries, managers of serious clubs. If you cannot train, if they pay you much, a lot, but if you cannot meet up to their you resign. There is no, if you give if you give fan all its support and give them a target, there is no way fan cannot beat that target of 450 billion a year. And secondly, sir, if you are, if you are saying that the concessionaire that look, you want to you want uh, Lagos Airport, you want Abuja, okay, that. Fan is making about a something billion. That if we are going to give you a target, we are going to give you a target to, to make 250 billion. Because we have a loan on our neck. And the truth about it is that it's not Nigerian government will not pay for this loan without paying it through, through fan. Fan must service that loan. That is how it functions. Because if we don't get a, se a sector to service the loan, such a loan, then there will be a problem. Fund need to service the loan. Thirdly, if you allow, the way I see this thing is, one is the, is the is, I'm, I'm just out of my, this the best. Generally, what I'm saying is, if we encourage targets in the industry, it's going to assist. That is my, my own. I support whatever that will, that will make. Okay, look, the critical aspect of every government is the welfare of the people. Very critical to government. It doesn't matter to government whether you want to take everything. Like you just said, we have 8,100 staff, staff friends in fund. If the constitutional can say, look, I'm going to take this airport. Fund is making 85 billion. I'm going to take it to 200 billion. I'm going to increase in two years' time. I will increase the staff trend to 10,000 more. Nobody will argue with anything. 
We will celebrate it. Exactly, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, that we are going to go through the Constitution Council and the Constitution Council and the Constitution the transaction advisor will have determined the value of the assets to be positioned, the potential of the assets, what can the asset generate now and in the future, and if all these are done, then the, the, the negotiation will now begin to say, okay, currently we are doing this thing under a billion. We have the potential, because the expert has said the same the numbers. From the numbers, it is saying that we can do 300 billion, and this is what we want. And that's what the fund will, or government in this case, will negotiate with the transaction advisor and the positioner, and come to a figure that is agreeable. Mr. Chairman, I think in driving this rule proper, we should be trusted. And this is the reason why. Since we came in and began to implement diligently this roadmap, Aviation has become the second fastest growing sector in the economy in 2018. In 2019, we became the fastest growing sector in the Nigerian economy today. And this is MBS and Federal Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Mr. Chairman, we're saying that if we continue and we negotiate diligently, diligently, we negotiate, we are going to triple, if not quadruple, whatever uh, fund is making at the moment. We want to insist, Mr. Chairman, that from our wisdom, from what we see, we see that, and we like to marry and agree with the statement that government has no business in business. If everything belongs to everybody, it belongs to nobody. The private sector ch chap, who is going to take a terminal building, he is going to put things that will make that terminal building appealing to passengers, appealing to airlines, appealing to users, to try to improve on the generation of revenue because it's added. And we will negotiate with him because we know how much he will gain. But no matter how you do it, we've been doing it in the last 60 years, Mr. Chairman. If you go to Lagos Airport today, Lagos International Airport in Mutala Mohammed, with all of the money being made over 60 years, it doesn't start from today. You see the level of dilapidation and the way we are going. Suddenly we are heading for crisis, Mr. Chairman. This Lagos Airport itself, it's built to serve 2 million passengers per annum. That was the intention. But eventually, they built only the section that will be doing 200,000 passengers per annum. Today, it was doing 8 million passengers per annum. 8 million. So the toilet that you made and the lifts to get up 200,000 people is now catering for 8 million people. That was because, and there's no expansion, there's no development, because it belongs to the government. It belongs to nobody. Nobody cares. The attitude that we have as a people with much more respect. So if these assets, the tunnel bills are transferred to private hands. They will put in their money there, put in their expertise, put in their energy, make it better, and it's a perfect, diligent negotiation between us and them to come to a bigger attitude. That's why we're saying that the transparency comes into play. At that time when you are negotiating, when you are dealing, you must have known the value of your assets, you have known the potential of your assets, how much you can get from your assets, and then you negotiate how much you want. You can, if you assume that you're going to get 200 billion, for example, you can begin from asking 300 billion. That's possible and it's doable. And there are examples of this. And Mr. Chairman, it has nothing to do with the world of Nigeria. The richest country on earth today, Qatar, they have positioned their apples. So they make more. In there, when you, get, when you go in there, you have uh, spa, you have uh, cinemas, you have uh, uh, everything that you need in an airport and make it a city of home, for which airports are now what it is. Mr. Chairman, let's, let's go to non theoretical revenues that you talk about. And I want to go back in time, maybe 2005. In 2005, 24th of December 2005, Dubai Airport, with their duty free that one kilometer long at that time, they made in one night sales five million US dollars. Just because I remember Linda, I want to buy a coffee. <laughs> Nothing with this. Duty free is what it is. You came to the airport, you have a bit, a bit of time, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and you buy a coffee. And it's 5 million dollar sales. Government does not have the resources to develop those robust duty free in our airports. And if you give it to fragments of people who are not backed by any negotiation, any diligent calculation of the potential of your assets, 
They will take it for what it is and give you what they want to give to you. Today, today, the chairman, sorry, the chairman, today, the chairman, today, we are not getting maximum revenue from our, say, um, car parking or from our uh, uh, um, duty free. When I said I'm the chief of offense in the past, I said our duty free, what we came to 2015, is figures and new one. That's what you see. But it is gradually beginning to change. It will change better when there are, for everything there is an expert. Somebody who is, is expertise and business to do so. Today there are expert business managers of airports who understand what it does, who has, what, it, what it takes to do to turn this airport to be earning much more money. So in, in doing the position, it is the government that will identify from a diligent process with transparency who and who is interested in the Nigerian airports, just like we've seen the Qatar, like, like I said, we've seen Saudi Arabia, we've seen America, we've seen China, we've seen Chinese, we've seen everywhere people are considering the airports we've seen Dubai. We've seen Dubai itself. And uh, the potential of our airports can only be can only be gotten when we improve significantly the non-aerological revenues that are found in the standard buildings. The issue of having uh, targets is so important because I would have been more comfortable if the target had been set for a uh, plan, even in a time frame, and of course they didn't meet up with it. That would be pretty easy to tell. But as, as it is, going by the document that was submitted, that you see, attack them viable, okay? And the TA can do evaluation and say, okay, um, if you actually run this well, you can get X, Y, Z in two years or in three years. If they can't do it, right? If they're unable to do it, seriously, I can understand the concession. My, I'm just uncomfortable with the fact that it's been assumed that they can't do it, whereas they are listed as being uh, so that, I'm just not so like really comfortable uh, with that. And another thing, you did say when I mentioned the Chinese loan, you did say that it was uh, that uh, the Ministry of Finance got it. But you see, the essence of loan is that when you get it, 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 I mean you have to you have to repay it obviously. It's not free, right? So whatever you use it for, that's why you usually um, it's encouraged that if you get a loan, you should use for infrastructure so that you get some you get something back. You understand? So when you when you said Mr. Finance got it, I'm just wondering when Mr. Finance wants to get the money to repay. Because I would have assumed that if it was gotten specifically to build terminals, that the repayment should be from those terminals. That is what will make sense. So when you try to make a decision that okay, it's Mr. Finance, I don't think that I'm not really comfortable that if this were to go on, okay, that it won't fall on. Nigerian government to pay for all this. That, uh, that's, what, that's one of the areas that I have been Thank you very much, Reverend. But, but just, Mr. Chairman, just like Chairman, that's what the primary concern is. Um, I, would like to, I would like to look at this in a much more different way. Assuming the, the fund would have to pay this uh, 380 billion naira over time, um, it's only when they're making more money that they'll be able to pay. It's only when they're making more money, they, are about, they will be about to pay, able to pay. If they are not making money, they will be able to pay. So whoever pays, is government that is paying. Whoever is paying, is government that is paying. So if, so if, for them to be able to pay, for them to be able to pay, they have to make more money. And if you allow this infrastructure in the hands of the government as we see it, as we see it, they are not going to be able to harness the potentials of these assets, let alone make access and be able to service 400 billion naira loan. Example, going that route. But you see, what 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 what, what I'm saying is that also regarding this um, this uh, uh, airport terminal buildings and associated infrastructure such as the cargo terminal and the airport that we're talking about. From experience, one can go back in time and see how much money was found able to make, even from the point that they built this airport, say Lagos, 
1998. And today, what is the liability? What are they owing? What is the status of this airport as they are? Mr. Chairman, I took the tour and I, I, I urge you to please kindly also make our time to go into Mutala Mahabad Airport today. I have a camera and if I will excuse the camera for a minute. But the passenger in Nigeria, which will improve from 80 million to 80 million, is 30 times out of that. 30 times. The total operations of the Ghana uh, uh, air, um, airlines does not equate to what Airbus is doing here in Nigeria, only Airbus alone. And this is even getting it wrongly by most of the airlines in Nigeria. Once they get it rightly, they get it correct, and we're able to tap into this single African Air Council market, the Nigerian situation will change and will change for good. And we need an airport that can support that. Finally, just for this matter, when we began to look for partners into one of our projects, including the National Carrier Airport, Qatar, which was voted at that time the best air airline in the world, said they won't come to Nigeria, they won't come to Abuja, and the only reason why they want to come would come is because we don't have catering, we don't have good airports that can take their passengers and give them an experience in the field. We don't have X, we have Y, ground handling is in shambles. But Mr. Chairman, just yesterday, what we did the deal for an improvement of the sector. Just yesterday, Qatar has mentioned to us that they want to come to uh, Abuja and perhaps they will build them go to camp, to which we have no objection. Mr. Chairman, before we, before we dealt with Inubu, before we dealt with Inubu, Ethiopia Airlines have already mentioned that they are going to stop coming because something major disaster, fatal, will happen. So why the government is struggling to be using to, the money that they earn to, to tender to such a particular project, tender to particular such a project, and then the nation will have the, will have the unfortunate uh, being the wrong candidate in council, who will go to government. If I go to debate, I will be debated against the Minister for Health. I will be debated against the Minister for Education. I will be debated against the Minister for Water. All of these, quote unquote, are more important than civil education. But yet, yet, the other one said, Chicken Edo against Aurea, that within the smallness of an eye, you find a who who have somewhere to sit. Within lack of money, lack of money, the government has trusted what we are doing in the sector. They've seen the numbers, they've been giving us money. We are fixing all these airports all over the place. We fixed the Inu, we fixed Abuja, we fixed all these airports. Now we are doing that. So the government has no money to continue to invest in this. The best thing we can do is to turn that non security critical uh, uh, components and assets into product hands to make them better. If there is going to be a shop here in National Assembly, shop here in National Assembly, that belongs to National Assembly, civil service, to run, shop here. Or restaurant. I bet you, if you give this gentleman, forget about the fact he's a pilot, if you give a space to book, people will go to him. So I'm saying, I'm saying that if National Assembly here, where we are, will operate canteen being run by civil servants that are working in National Assembly, canteen, and you find another canteen and give this man. Or go to Honorable Linda. People will go to Honorable Linda's shop to eat. For sure. Because she cares. Because she wants to make money, more money. Because she will give improved sites. While the National Assembly Civil Servants are happy with their salaries, there is no incentive, there is no reason to make it better. So, Mr. Chairman, what we are saying is that yes, Fire has been running these airports for the last 60 years, but they have been doing very badly. We now want to trust the private sector, who are not only private sector, but are people with proven record that they have done it somewhere, that they have improved the revenue, improved earnings, and more importantly, improved the passenger experience. 